Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Today I wanted to go over a little bit more uh, about using resistance in locating faulty components. Now, as you can see here, I have a new UNI-T UT61E meter here, um, in addition to my Fluke 87. Uh, I, I did a video on this for you guys, but uh, ran into a little problem. So I probably won't be putting that video out. So I am making a new video about this. My goal was to be able to connect the meter to the computer to show you guys how I use resistance to locate faulty components in amplifiers. And I know what I have here is not an amplifier, but this is a absolute perfect example of how to use resistance to find a fault in a device. So um, yes, it's true. I do work on things other than amplifiers, but I just don't uh, repair them as a business, other devices. Just example, there's all sorts of instances where you have to look up ICs and parts and replace parts and stuff. So what I'm going to go over today is uh, is how I go about using resistance and looking up components. So for this example of using resistance to find a fault, it's really hard to see, but down on this board, there are two ICs here, five pin ICs that lead out to each uh, bank of relays. And I'm going to show you how I used resistance and not particularly the diode check to find a faulty component. So I'm going to turn on this uni t ut 61e meter here and unfortunately i can't hook it up to the computer to show you guys on screen the readout of this but if any of you guys have any ideas on how to make this work with windows 10 please feel free to let me know or get a hold of me uh, Windows 10 will not recognize the protocol of the IC uh, that this USB adapter uses. I've looked into that. I mean, if you guys want another separate video on that, uh, feel, please feel free to ask. Um, but I spent hours researching the IC in this, um, uh, its protocol, and how Windows just doesn't support this protocol. So please let me know if you have a solution to that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the resistance, except these are 20 amp probes here. So I'm going to switch over to my 10 amp needle probes, which helps uh, get into these smaller ICs a little bit better. So let me just switch over to my 10 amp needles here. So on this device, on uh, test point two, I had found that I had two open uh, 100 ohm resistors. This was reading like 1.2 mega ohms is what this was reading before, um, which leads up to this five pin IC. So this this five pin IC is reading uh, about 236 ohms, while the neighboring one, which is an identical copy, reads uh, 1.4 k. And if you were to go to diode check on this, you will see 
that on diode check, it doesn't give you that constant beat that it, it has a short. Because each meter has a range to where it'll tell you if it's shorted or not. So that's why on amplifiers, uh, a lot of times I like to use resistance. So as long as you pay attention to the resistance that you're seeing on the components that you're testing, it gives you a good indication that that component is bad. So that's just one example of using resistance instead of the diode check. So you really have to understand uh, how diode check works, uh, the voltage that's applied across it to understand the reading that you're getting on the meter. Again, I hope to have on display uh, soon the readout of a meter for you guys. And then I just wanted to quickly go over this IC. Uh, I see a lot of people ask online, you know, they have an identifier. Each, each, uh, each SMD component has an identifier. But then they'll ask, well, what is it? And you can spend just an absolute amount of crazy time online trying to Google an identifier. For instance, this five pin I see here is labeled HKJ. And so please feel free, take a minute, go online, go to Google and search for a five pin HKJ. And I will bet, unless you've been doing this for a while, I'm gonna bet if you're new to this, you're gonna spend hours, or probably not even hours, because you'll probably, most people will probably just give up on trying to find it and just post something online. Um, but, there are resources out on the internet that will just point you to the right direction fairly quick. And there's one resource that I would like to point out to you guys about finding these ICs. So there's a website here that you see. Sure, it shows you a picture of a vacuum tube on the uh, homepage of this, of this website. But if you look up at the top there, you're going to see a line called SMD codes. And if you go and click on those SMD codes, and uh, this five pin I'm looking for is HKJ, so I'm going to go over here and click on H. And I'm going to scroll down and see if he has an HKJ. Let me just find the K's here. H K J here it is right here so H K J it's a SOT 23 5 pin I see and here's the part number to that it's an AD 8009 JRT-R2 again that's going back to this website here uh, with the URLs down in the lower left hand corner there for you guys. That's just a quick run through of that website um, to, as a reference to find ICs. And there is a plethora of information on that website uh, for all you guys that do repairs or if you're looking for a part. Uh, that website is an absolute gold mine of information. So that HKJ came back to being a analog device, a one gigahertz amplifier in 88009. And sure enough, if you were to follow the pinout of this five pin, uh, SOT 23, so here's your pin one, which is your output. And you go back to the circuit board and that pin one right there went to those parallel 100 ohm resistors that were open. So that 
really tells me that I'm on the right track finding the finding the right IC. And just to back that up even further, that that website pointed me in the right direction, here's the branding, which I call, uh, I call them identifiers. Uh, so this one here, branding, well, there it is, HKJ. So then I knew I found the right I, I had found the right IC to repair this channel uh, on this device here. So again, that's HKJ. It's uh, an 88009. And then it goes back to, well, unfortunately, you're not going to really find an 88009 uh, IC. But if you go to Mauser and type in that part number, you're going to find that they have a great cross-reference uh, selection to that IC. So, um, so I got that in my cart. Uh, but just to verify this device, I'm actually going to take the good 5-pin and swap it over to the bad 5-pin and see if channel 1 fires up for me here. So that was my just quick rundown of finding a bad component using resistance identifying the component, going to what I consider a great resource to identify the component, which then you can pull up the data sheet to verify what you found, which again, that's a great reference. So again, if anyone knows anything about this protocol, it's a uh, infrared protocol, uh, which Windows sets it up as a uh, human interface device, HID. Uh, please let me know. I'd hate to buy a meter that I'm just not going to use uh, if I can't get it to display. I have a Fluke 87 that does all my work for me here, so I just wanted to get something on the screen for you guys. So stay tuned. I will be uh, back with you guys. Like this content. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, email me, uh, my website, ellensburgamplifier.com. And I also now have amplifier parts that are listed on the website. Uh, I'm adding more parts as I can get time to get those parts listed. And if you have any parts and requests, uh, again, please let me know. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.